Arabella sits up. Just for a minute. Oh, oh I am so bored. I first learned to read at the age of four and have not been without a book since. Reading into the It's a fear of digestion, yes, you've told me. Being deprived of books does not stop me thinking. Wondering what sort of doctor would practice in a prison. As I might wonder what sort of a woman chooses to burn down other people's property. Which is exactly what we intend you to wonder. Really? Of course. We do what we do to make people think. And bombing and burning? Yes. Who in this country is denied the vote? Children, lunatics, criminals, and women. Women who may earn wages and pay taxes. Mr. Asquith says we are not to be trusted. Our soft-heartedness will stop us voting for war, lest our sons are killed in battle. So you set fire to a race course. So, we say, if it is our softness you hold against us, well, then, we shall not be soft. Not very good. If we were talking of prison doctrine, and the sort of man who would choose such a career, don't you know what I think? No. A sham doctor. Someone who could not apply his trade anywhere else. You question my qualifications. Yes, I do. Licentiate of the Royal College of Physicians and the Royal College of Surgeons at the University of Edinburgh. Licentiate of the Royal Faculty of Physicians and Surgeons at the University of Glasgow. Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery, Doctor of Medicine, and I will soon have a doctorate in philosophy. All that study, just to torture miscreants in a penitentiary. I study to understand. And have so little understanding. I understand you well enough. I doubt that, Dr. Savage. A neurotic hunger for attention. A classroom of children hanging on your every word is not enough. You want the Prime Minister and all his cabinet to attend to you. They could ignore me forever if they would give me the vote. Ten years ago, it was the right to graduate in medicine. Now it's the right to vote. Once you have that eye and you'll get it, it'll be the right to minister to the parish or kill for your country or hook coal out of the ground and they'll grant you that too in the end. None of it will satisfy you. Then what would? Her husband. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dr. Savage. I would have thought you would do better than that. Nature seeks a balance. Masculine and feminine, virility and tenderness, brain and womb. Your body, the feminine body, is a part of nature. Denied the balance of wedlock and motherhood, it must remain unfulfilled. Suffrage campaigning as sex starvation. It is a question of the body needs. And what about you? We are not talking You are not married, I think. <laughs> what of your bodily needs? I take measures to counter the problem. Potassium bromide. <laughs> <laughs> bromide. You thought I... I'm... You think me capable of vice. I misunderstood. Ah, you misunderstood. My first position was in an asylum. One in seven of the cases I treated had the same cause. Syphilis. More destructive to the health of a nation than tuberculosis or alcohol. You've heard of the Wasserman reaction? A test for syphilis. I had a hand in developing it under Professor Browning. A blood sample is drawn, serum extracted, a simple compound added. Agitate the test tube and you have your diagnosis. Carriers. People with no symptoms you might not find out for years. Now we can tell them you are infected. And they can be cured? Some. <coughs> but all can be prevented from breathing. We have a tool that could revolutionise public health policy if... If? It is not a situation the politicians wish to acknowledge. <coughs> The population riddled with syphilis, the mothers of empire passing on the degeneracy. Not all the mothers of empire, a surprisingly surely. high proportion. <laughs> a woman who has a stillborn child by a syphilitic husband may marry a healthy man, remain clinically healthy herself, and yet bear syphilitic children. I have seen them. A few months old, already blind or deaf, or bones weakened by spleen enlargement. Others live decades in apparent health, only to suffer sudden attack. These women may be blameless in their conduct, not some of them, but they are a horrible danger to the community. And what would you do about them? Test every woman admitted to a laying in hospital. Those found to be positive would be sterilised, the children removed to an institution. And the men? What about them? <laughs> <laughs> what is to happen to them while these, these women are mutilated and their children <clears throat> incarcerated? It's too serious a serious matter for rhetoric. We are talking about the opportunity to wipe out cretinism and disease, to eliminate a significant source of human misery. 
If every country adopted such a system, we could weed out the breeding stock and improve the entire human race. But you have not answered my question. What question? Why take no an action against the men? Syphilis is not a notifiable disease. The government favours a voluntary approach. For men? The women will be in hospital anyway. So women are to pay? Half measures are better than none. Women are to be tested because they are more tractable. Do you know what I, lesson I draw from that? That women will continue to be treated unjustly until they become as violently unreasonable as men. Thank you, Doctor. You have clarified my position admirably. The warder arrives to restrain Arabella. No need. I'm finished here. <laughs>